for the past few years, and especially the last year and a half, I've been spending a lot of time listening to, to ministers. And after going through my experience in LA of being really let down by the lack of Bible coming out of younger ministers, I've been drawn to older ministers. And so spend a lot of time listening to a great deal of people. And, um, and as I read the word more, I'm just guided more to be like, let's see what the word says. Uh, so the prosperity gospel is garbage. Proverbs 23 verse 4 says, Do not weary yourself to gain wealth. Cease from your consideration of it. This is a book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich that I've read a couple times. It has not led me closer to God. It has not led me anywhere closer to Jesus Christ. So I must cease from my consideration of it. I never need to read these pages again. They do not have the wisdom of God for me. Now, does God want us to be prosperous in life? Yes, we can see stuff in scripture, especially the Proverbs about stewarding well, making right decisions. But then we see so many verses about not doing things the wrong way, of how we're not to be led by greed. We're not to... Well, we're not to weary ourselves to gain wealth. We're not supposed to be led by mammon. We're not supposed to build up for ourselves on earth riches where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but we're supposed to build up for ourselves riches in heaven. Now, can we buy property? Can we buy land? God's going to lead a lot of people to do that in life. However, the gospel is supposed to be taken to the poor. Jesus and the apostles mentioned that of don't forget the poor. Take this to the poor. Don't be led by money. You cannot serve both God and wealth. So even as I'm early in the days of the ministry that God's called me to, I'm into something more important than the ministry, and that's I'm called into fellowship with Jesus Christ. I'm called to follow the ways of my Lord. Now, Jesus once told somebody who wanted to follow him, the birds of the air have nests, the foxes have holes in the ground, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus often didn't know where he was going to sleep at night. He knew what it was like to be homeless. He was a man of many sorrows, well acquainted with grief. This whole give to the church so that you can be prosperous and blessed is garbage. It's a lie. They've been swindling from us. They've been lying to us. And I want to stand firm right now that I will never preach the prosperity garbage gospel But I've determined to know one thing, and that's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, I'm not even here to call out the names of those that have come before. But I've stood in their meetings where they've said, fire! And I determined not to fall back unless I really felt the presence of God and thousands of people fell around me, but I did not feel the fire of God. And I'm not just talking about the bad church I came out of recently. I'm talking about crusades that I went to when I first went to Bible school many years ago. If we're not going to follow Jesus, no matter what the cost, then what are we doing? I'm not claiming to be perfect. I'm not claiming to be doing everything in my life the right way right now. But I'm seeking to follow his spirit and to really know him.
we see these people that become so rich through ministry, and it's not wrong to be blessed. But that's never supposed to be the focus of a ministry. It's not supposed to guide why we talk about a topic, post a video. It's not supposed to be a guiding force at all. I'm just going to share with you a few verses about money. Now, the Bible does say the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So there is a blessing of God that some people are going to experience. But not everybody, and it's not supposed to be a pursuit, a guiding force, a directing force, a directive in our life. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Ecclesiastes 5.10 Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Hebrews 13.5 Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Luke 12.15 no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Matthew six twenty four. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. And there's many many verses about this, but. We're not to be led by greed. We don't need to read books about financial prosperity. We want to be prosperous God's way. Be a good steward. Don't deceive people in any way at all, ever. As I'm learning, I, I sense God showing me to not be aligned with ministries that deceive people. To not... One day in the future, play worship at their meetings, testify at their meetings. I think we don't take seriously our God. And I'm learning this. To have the fear of God. To really follow him. It's not easy. And daily, he has to show me how I'm not getting it right. And you know, some ways I am. But there's other ways in life that he's like, you don't need that book. You're never going to read it again. You don't need to listen to these prosperity people. That's not the answer. It's not the way. He's called me to put my trust in him. That he would lead me. We've made so many doctrines that are not in the Bible. So many things that have nothing to do with our faith. We have to follow Christ. I'm setting myself to follow Christ. The prosperity doctrine is garbage. That's all I have for you. God bless you guys. Let's build treasures in heaven. It's fellowship with Christ. We don't need to use him. We don't need to manipulate. There's no room for that in Christ. There's no room for the love of money. There's verses where Paul talks about, he's giving guidance for those in ministry, saying that those that enter into the ministry cannot be lovers of money. This is, this is one of the, the boundaries that he has on, that, that the word puts on who can be in ministry, not lovers of money. So when we see a minister obsessed with finances, this is not a man of God. They may, they may have the appearance of prosperity, but everything they have is going to burn up. 
Proverbs 40. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, it's actually, I think, Psalm 40. Bear with me just one more moment. This is serious. Let's see if I can find it. I just, I heard this earlier today and uh, it's important. Well, you know what? I'm not seeing it quickly enough, so I'm not going to read it. But many are going to be rich in this life and they're going to have their comfort fully in this life. But then after this, there's going to be nothing for them. So God bless you guys. Stay in peace. Keep the faith. Don't let anyone bewitch you or deceive you from the true gospel of Jesus Christ.